I'm Helen Beckett, editor of the Business Value Exchange here at Discover London. And here to talk to me about the world of mergers, acquisitions and divestitures is Nigel Lapthorn. Hello. Hi Nigel. Hi. It's a really frenetic world at the moment, isn't it? Despite political turmoil, economic uncertainty, all the pundits are predicting, forecasting much more activity in M&As. Can you just give us a picture? Yeah, I would say that year to date, um, probably forecast about $2 trillion of transactions um, to the end of this year. Um, a trillion dollars of those are pretty much taking place in America. And it's interesting that America are acquiring many, many businesses uh, across the EMEA market. Um, 500 billion of those transactions seem to be taking place across EMEA um, and the remaining part of that across the rest of the world and of course across Asia. What's, what's really fascinating is the fact that you know, tech companies are now being um, sought after by the big players. You may find a business that traditionally would do a you know, create a product and sell that to another business and they're buying tech companies now to get access to the consumer markets. So it's really diversifying. Um, and also, as you can probably imagine, the oil and gas market is now starting to consolidate. We had the big hit where we had $100 per barrel. It's now below $50 per barrel. And you're finding, especially in Norway in the north and in Italy and the US, some of those companies that were involved in the drilling in the seismic areas, so the discovery and um, looking for oil, are starting to consolidate that market. So that's a really frenetic picture of activity that you, that you describe, Nigel. So we have like companies divesting, trying to get access to innovation, doing cross-plays, teaming up with new kind of partners, yes. and what's happening in the oil industry as well. So how do the customers you talk to, what are their major pain points? What, what are the, the pitfalls that await them as many a company are going to have to undergo an M&A in the near future? I think what's really interesting is IT is still very much seen as a back office capability. And my advice really to any CIO would actually be either, either position yourself with one of your direct reports as a focal point and, and engage your corporate M&A team, your deal team. It's not easy, but if you actually are able to do that, you get early visibility of a transaction. You can start to look at what that means in regards to the business you're supporting, the IT capability that you have and the systems that you support. So the IT chief should be very much on the front foot we're hearing from you. What are the dangers of not doing that? I hear things about separation management, integration issues. What can go wrong? Well, the big things that can go wrong, clearly your ERP platforms are very complex. They can be difficult to separate, to divest. Many, many companies haven't still embraced the cloud platforms that some of us enjoy today. And we're also running legacy systems and running their legacy data centers. So some of those will be heavily customized. And the less time you have to address separating, cloning, or even taking the data out of one of those environments, um, the more pressure, more risk you put upon a transaction. Oh gosh, separating, cloning, rationalization, there is so much to do and often a very compressed amount of time. What about the whole security aspect as well? That's right high up in the agenda now, isn't it? It, it very much is. And I think when you are divesting a business, you don't tend to physically separate. And what you tend to do is you will tend to share systems logically for a period of time. And the security aspects of that are very, very important. You've got two separate businesses in effect. Um, under separate legal entities, sharing the same infrastructure, sharing the same environment, and you need to delineate that and control that as much as possible. And the other thing to realize is that from, a, from an outside-in perspective, this is where you're at the most vulnerable, and you've got to keep some very tight control over that, over that area. So as well as some real tough IT challenges of integration that you've outlined, also kind of the legalistic side of it, the legal thing that can end in great pain if that doesn't go right, what can customers expect if they partner with enterprise services? Well, we're a relatively new practice, but we were born out of the HP separation and clearly enterprise services have been very much engaged with mergers and acquisitions, supporting our customers and clients and for a very, very long time. But the real advantage of taking a capability from the separation is the collateral, the frameworks we've now delivered from experience that we can now leverage to support our clients. So you've kind of harvested all that experience and it sounds like you know there's collateral which can be shared with customers and some kind of like a roadmap almost, is, is that a fair well, way we, to put it? Yes, I mean we, we've developed an eight um, step framework which is very clear, I think it's very unique in the market. We've developed tooling to support that. What that does is that accelerates um, and de-risks your, your project and also when you've got maybe a thousand, two thousand applications that you may be dis dispositioning to support a transaction, you've got to keep track of those. And that is very, very difficult and it's happening at a very significant pace at the same time. Okay, well that's a lot of ground we covered. Thanks very much, Nigel Lapthorne, for talking about how to de-risk your merger, acquisition and divestiture. Thank you.